morning. This morning, we're going to deal with family feud. Family feud. I'm going to give you the text, the talk, and the takeaway. How many of you watch Family Feud? You watch Steve Harvey and Family Feud. I mean, it is hilarious. I absolutely love it. Uh, more often than not, I don't miss it if I'm home at that time having dinner or just finishing dinner. I'm going to catch uh, either one or two um, episodes, if you will, of Family Feud. I just think it's hilarious. But guess what? Guess what? Family Feuds are not hilarious. So let me give you the text, the talk, and the takeaway as to how do you deal with Family Feuds. The text is this, Genesis 27, 5 through 9. Genesis 27, 5 through 9. Let me kind of paraphrase that whole pericope or section of scripture. Now, Rebecca was listening to Isaac, who was telling his son Esau to go out and get him some game because he was hungry and he wanted something to eat. Rebecca said to her son, Jacob, Jacob, uh, I've been listening to your father talk to your brother about how he wants some game to eat. I need you to go out and I need you to go to uh, two choice goats and uh, bring them here and watch me uh, do my magic with respect to this family. You already know this story. You know how Rebecca is setting up this whole thing about making sure that Jacob the younger gets the birthright and the blessing. He's already got uh, the birthright. Now she wants to make sure he gets the blessing. That is a spoken word over him uh, from his father, her husband, uh, Isaac. So what does he say? She says to him, go out, get this. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take one of them because your brother is hairy and you're not. And we're going to make sure that you're covered in uh, one goat skin. So when your daddy reaches out to touch, he'll think that it's your brother. And the other, we're going to kill it. And we're going to make sure that it is absolutely scrumptious so your dad can eat. He don't see well and he can't hear too good either. All right. Three things that you need to learn from this story with respect. How do you get out of, how do you resolve family feuds? The first thing is this. Don't fuel them with fake and false actions. Don't fuel them further with fake and false actions. What does Rebecca do? Rebecca uh, started a generational split that is existent to this day. The wars that we often see and the problems that we see in Israel and Israel's neighbors, which are really Israel's cousins, they are really reflective of this very thing that started in scripture. That here is Esau who does not get the blessing and Jacob gets the blessing. And as a result of this, we now have the problems that we have. We have these problems that we currently have in the Middle East. What she does fuels generational splits that is existent even to this day. Don't fuel them with fake and false actions. Second thing is this. Don't turn a blind eye or act like you didn't hear something. <laughs> Don't turn a blind eye or act like you didn't hear anything. You know, when this whole thing was going down, Isaac said, I suspect something is up. What's going down? You don't smell. You don't act like you're, this is Esau, but you feel like it. Okay, give me something to eat anyhow. You know the story. He was suspicious. And then when he realized that he had blessed the wrong son, Jacob, the swindler, the one that undercuts, when he realizes that, Esau has a fit about it but he doesn't change it. He doesn't change it. He turns a blind eye to it. The third thing is this, be determined to resolve family feuds. Be determined to resolve family fuels. These feuds that take place in your family have to be resolved. They cannot remain. They will only simmer and grow bigger and bigger. Notice what Jacob does years later after he leaves home, in uh, trying to keep his life, save his life, because his brother Esau says, I'm going to kill you. He leaves his home. He goes and stays with Laban. And Laban, who is relative 
uh, to Isaac and Rebekah, and he stays there for years. And what finally happens is Esau comes around to meet him, and Jacob prays all night. That's the prayer that he prays when God shows up and says, I will not turn you loose until you bless me. The next day, he then sees his brother Esau and they greet and kiss, but he wasn't sure at all that that was going to be the resolution at that time. So what do you do? What's your takeaway this morning in family feuds, feuds, I should say, and resolving them? Family feuds can be fatal if you don't finally deal with them. So you got to deal with them with grace. Family feuds can be fatal if you don't finally deal with them and you have to deal with them with grace of God. We're going to be talking more all week long about how to deal with family feuds, interfamily issues, and how do you get relationships to work in really blended families and beyond. So what we're going to deal with this week. God bless you. You have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow morning with more morning manna. This manna bless you. Bless somebody else. Share the manna. Don't keep it to yourself. Bye now.